It's Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024, and I'm Dave Sobel. Four things to know today. As new models emerge, a new study reveals 92% of Windows machines and large organizations are not AI ready. AI leaders and academics push for increased NIST funding to enhance AI safety oversight. Produce 8 introduces advanced work analytics to boost efficiency in MSP operations. And Google partners with the National Guard to enhance disaster response with AI. This is the business of tech. In today's digital work environment, the browser is the most widely used operating system yet remains a significant security blind spot. Atacama has introduced the browser security platform purpose-built for MSPs. Built in collaboration with over 40 MSPs, this solution focuses on managing and protecting today's window of work, the browser. Atacama's browser extension empowers MSPs to set data policies, gain critical insights, and optimize the user experience. Atacama recently announced the limited-time 50 for 50 program, discounting the per-user price by 50% when you deploy the plug-in to 50% or more of your client endpoints. Visit atacama.com slash mspradio to learn more and see the platform in action. That's A-T-A-K-A-M-A dot com slash mspradio to learn more. So there's some model movement to catch up on in AI. Meta has released the Llama 3 large language model, which powers Meta AI and offers improved reasoning, code generation, and diverse responses. Mark Zuckerberg, Meta CEO, claims that Meta AI is now the most intelligent AI assistant available for free use. Meta plans to make Llama 3 multilingual and multimodal in the future. The AI assistant can assist with tasks like recommending restaurants and planning trips, and Meta's AI Imagine feature produces sharper images faster. Meta AI is available across various platforms and will soon be integrated into the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. Amazon Web Services is enhancing its Bedrock artificial intelligence service by allowing customers to import their own custom AI models alongside models from major providers. This move aims to appeal to AI application developers and compete with other cloud giants like Microsoft and Google. The new capability is available in preview and includes updates to Amazon's Titan Foundation models and the availability of third-party models on Bedrock. Additionally, Amazon is releasing its model evaluation capacity and guardrails feature. Microsoft has launched the Phi 3 Mini, its smallest AI model yet, with 3.8 billion parameters. It's the first of three small models the company plans to release, and it performs better than the previous version. Small AI models like Phi 3 are cheaper to run and perform well on personal devices. Phi 3 was trained with a curriculum inspired by how children learn from simpler books and sentence structures. Adobe has introduced new generative AI tools in Photoshop, powered by the Firefly Image 3 model. The reference image tool allows users to upload images that serve as a guide for the AI-generated output. Other tools include Generate Background, Enhance Detail, Generate Similar, and Generate Image. Adobe claims that Firefly is safe for commercial use and offers higher quality image generation. And according to Absolute Security, the majority of organizations need to update or replace their systems to be AI-ready. A recent analysis found that 92% of Windows machines in organizations with 500 or more active devices running Windows 10 or 11 don't meet the basic requirements to handle modern AI applications efficiently. Absolute Security warns that considerable investment in AI-capable endpoint fleets can divert resources from critical IT and security priorities, potentially leaving gaps in security and risk policies. Why do we care? Right tool for the right job continues to be the theme for AI models. They're distinctly not created equal. Let's dwell on that absolute security statement. Warning of diversion from IT and security spend by a security provider has an interesting inverse. Perhaps organizations will get a higher return on that investment elsewhere, and thus why they pick it. For security teams, you may need to make a better argument. I've covered the need for NIST funding just recently. Well, I'm not alone. 
From the Washington Post, leading AI companies, universities, and civil society groups are urging Congress to expand funding for the National Institute of Standards and Technology to support the growing work of its AI Safety Institute. The request for additional funding comes in response to years of funding challenges that have left NIST with limited resources and facilities, threatening its ability to oversee advanced AI systems. The letter, signed by over 80 organizations, including Amazon, OpenAI, the ACLU, and MIT, emphasizes the importance of NIST's role in maintaining America's technological leadership and calls for Congress to prioritize NIST's funding request of $47.7 million. The recent hires and budget increase proposed in the White House's 2025 budget request are seen as positive steps, but the letter's authors argue that more funding is needed to advance AI research and testing. And while I'm on funding, Women Who Code, a nonprofit organization supporting women in the tech industry, has announced its closure due to the loss of critical funding. The organization aimed to promote diversity and inclusivity and had a global network of over 360,000 members. Despite hosting numerous events and providing scholarships, Women Who Code will no longer be able to offer program services or hold future events. Why do we care? Funding is everything, and without it, organizations wither and die. It's a critical loss of women who code. So if you believe in the mission of NIST here, urge for funding. For stakeholders and advocates in the tech community, these developments are a wake-up call and a call to action to support funding initiatives that both empower regulatory bodies and diversity-promoting organizations. It's a reminder that advocacy, public support, and strategic funding are crucial for sustaining the ecosystems that define technology. For those who believe in these causes, engaging with policymakers, contributing to discussions, and supporting funding initiatives are tangible ways to make a difference, ensuring that these institutions and organizations can continue their valuable work. Produce 8, a work analytics vendor, has announced a significant platform advancement designed to boost productivity and manage services providers. The new release includes features such as capturing employee sentiment, integrating video call data, and measuring the financial impact of time spent in meetings. The goal is to empower employees to understand their workday better and increase efficiency. Pax 8 has announced workforce reductions, letting go of 5% of its workforce, primarily in North America. The decision was influenced by economic factors such as industry contraction, slowed spending, and leadership missteps. Fax 8 had previously achieved financial milestones, including hitting a $1 billion annual recurring revenue run rate and raising $185 million in funding. Other tech companies like ConnectWise and Kaseya have recently announced layoffs too. Why do we care? Your role as a leader is to deploy resources correctly, which includes the decisions to hire. Ultimately, it's leadership's failure when there are layoffs. I'm not saying it's not required, and often it's required to keep the business afloat, but let's acknowledge that the reason starts at the top. Acknowledging that layoffs, while sometimes necessary, are a failure of resource deployment is crucial for honest leadership. Google is partnering with the National Guard to provide artificial intelligence tools that can analyze images of disaster areas, helping them respond faster and more effectively. The technology developed by Bellwether, a group within Google's Innovation Lab, can identify locations, roads, buildings, and infrastructure by comparing aerial photos with satellite imagery and maps. The collaboration highlights the increasing involvement of Silicon Valley in working with the Defense Department, with more tech companies building specific technologies for the military. Google, despite its complicated history with the U.S. military, has returned to military work and will be providing AI for disaster response, not military action. Why do we care? Today it's about use case, data analysis for the win. After facing internal and external backlash for its involvement in Project Maven, a Pentagon project using AI to improve drone targeting, Google had stepped back from direct military contracts, leading to the establishment of clear guidelines that govern its project with the military, focusing on non-offensive purposes. This strategic decision to provide AI tools for disaster relief can be seen as part of Google's efforts to rehabilitate and reshape its relationship with the military, focusing on humanitarian and rescue operations. 
Today's episode is supported by CoreView. Your customers need your Microsoft 365 expertise, and CoreView has the only M365 management platform designed for MSPs. Manage hundreds of tenants, automate manual tasks, and monitor compliance, all while intelligently comparing to the baseline. With a no-code control approach, CoreView revolutionizes your Microsoft 365 administration. This powerful platform enables automatic reporting and remediation, ensuring optimal performance and security. The best part? You achieve this high level of service without the need for a large workforce, allowing you to focus on growing your business through efficiency. Want to know more? Visit coreview.com slash MSP and find out more. Thanks for listening. Today is National Email Day. So send me an email because if you've got a question you want answered, I take them. Send it to question at mspradio.com. I answer listener questions live each week on the Wednesday live show on YouTube and LinkedIn. This week, 3 p.m. And if you got a comment or a thought, I do want to hear them. Put them in the comments if you're on YouTube. Or reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcast. Talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button, follow, or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP Radio, or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me, and I will talk to you again on our next episode of The Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.